With the displacement of more than 10,000 tons, the Type 055 can carry more weapons and equipments than any other Chinese destroyer. Hello and welcome to World Reviews. Today we will do some technical analysis of one of the Chinese advanced destroyers. The Type 055 adopts a conventional flared hull with distinctive stealthy features including an enclosed bow where mooring points, anchor chains and other equipment are hidden below decks. The bow armament adopts a similar configuration to the 052 Charlie Tilda with the main gun located most anterior, followed by 64 cell blocks of VLS and the 11 barrel HPJ 1130mm close in weapon system. The main deck house is similar to the proven configuration that the preceding 052 Delta adopts, with fixed four phase, phased array radars, arranged for overlapping 360 degree coverage. However, the mast atop the deck house is more advanced integrated mast with sensors and data links integrated into a single structure. Similarly, the midships area and the smoke stack is a continuous single structure extending from the main deck house. A continuous integrated structure not only provides additional volume for the various uses but also reduces deck clutter and the ship's associated radar cross-section. The single integrated smoke stack is notable as it appears to shield the exhaust from the ship's gas turbines to a greater degree likely to reduce infrared signatures and radar cross-section. Moving forward, there is a 48 cell block of VLS leading to the aft helo hangar structure featuring two helicopter hangars. A step structure atop this hangar was once suspected to possibly accommodate a volume such radar, but instead will likely be equipped with a small dome or other electronics. A 24 cell HHQ-10 missile service and four decoy turrets are equipped atop the hangar. A large stun helipad, greater in size than that on the 052 Charlie Delta destroyers, accommodates the ship's organic helicopter complement. The Type 055 uses the same universal VLS on the Type 052 Delta, but with a larger total cell count of 112. The Chinese Navy universal VLS can fire missiles in a cold launch method or a hot launch using concentric canister launch. Each individual square VLS cell has a diameter of 0.85 meters, significantly greater than that of the MK-41 VLS at 0.635 meters or even the Zumbold class MK-57 PVLS at 0.71 meters. The universal VLS comes in three lengths, the greatest being 9 meters, which is longer than the MK-41's largest strike length variant at 7.7 meters or the MK-57's 7.81 meters. The Type 055's beam and dwarf is likely sufficient for all 112 VLS to accommodate the largest 9-meter variant. What this means in practice is that an individual Chinese universal VLS cell can accommodate larger missiles than other international equivalents. In the case of Type 055, its 112 VLS count is lower than the Ticonderoga class 122 or Sijong class 128 but each cell has a larger internal volume with the potential to carry a larger missile. The Type 055 VLS will likely feel existing weapons that have been integrated into Type 052 Delta, such as the YJ-18 anti-ship missile and current variants of HHQ-9 naval. But the nature of the universal VLS means any future payload could be potentially integrated into the system such as future SAMs, ESHMs, LACMs, ESROCs or even ballistic missile defense payloads. Aside from VLS, the HPJ-38 130mm main gun is the same type which equips the Type 052 Delta, but curiously lacks a muzzle break as opposed to the Type 052 Delta. The aforementioned HPJ-11 and HHQ-10 Civis and decoy launchers provide last-ditch air defense and panels on the sides of the midship region likely hide standard triple 324mm torpedo tubes for short-range, last-ditch anti-surface warfare. Future Type 055 variants may alter the VLS count and adopt more exotic armaments such as railguns or directed energy weapons. The Type 055 is equipped with a further evolution of the Type 346 active waste array radar. The original Type 346 was a dual-band radar in the S and C bands. However, it is unknown if the Type 055 retains the C-band radar given the likely presence of an X-band radar. There are some suggestions Type 346 Bravo may use gallium nitride technology 
which would likely be within China's current industrial capabilities. Some publications have mentioned the low placement of the 055's main Type 346 Bravo arrays as a limitation or flaw in its design, which warrants some consideration. Warships such as Royal Navy Type 45 and Indian Calcutta class mount S-band arrays atop a high mast to provide greater radar horizon detection range against low-flying targets. However, mounting arrays in a higher position also limits the size of the array, meaning the absolute power of the radar system is also reduced. The Type 055, Type 052 Charlie Delta and Bo class adopt a lower mounted configuration. Some ships such as the Japanese Congo Otago class and the Spanish F-100 and Australian Hobart classes mount their main radar arrays at a slightly higher level than Brooks Type 052 Charlie Delta or Type 055 but lower than Type 45 or Indian Calcutta class destroyers. For the Type 055, the limitations of mounting their Type 346 Bravo at the level of the main deck house does not inherently compromise the ship's overall radar horizon range as the integrated mass above the deck house will likely mount the aforementioned X-band array. X-band radars are better suited for horizon search and discrimination of low-flying targets compared to S-band radars and having a dedicated high-mounted X-band radar allows the benefits of a larger and more powerful S-band radar in the form of Type 346 Bravo. Overall, the radar configuration of any warship is a compromise between various competing requirements and each configuration has different advantages and disadvantages. Outside of radars, other arrays and mounts for ESM, ECM, and EO sensors and data links have also been identified around the ship, but the designation of these systems are not known. Based on the external mounts that can be identified, they are likely a newer generation than what was present on existing ships like Type 052 Delta. In terms of subsurface sensors, an opening of the Type 055 similar to that of Type 052 Delta and Type 054 Alpha suggests it contain a variable depth sonar with a linear toad array sonar expected as well. Images during the launch of the Type 055 also demonstrate a large bulbous bow indicate of a large bow sonar, significantly greater than what existing Chinese surface combatants have been equipped with. The Type 055 ships are rumored to be equipped with integrated electric power plants, whereby the ship's turbine provide electricity to drive electric motors that then turn the ship's crew, a major advancement in Chinese warship design. They also feature the latest in electronic warfare capabilities and the most advanced mission systems deployed by the People's Liberation Army Navy to date. For propulsion, the Type 055 is equipped with four QC-280 gas turbines, each rated at a 28MW in a Kogag arrangement. For generating electricity, it is equipped with two pairs of three generators like small gas turbines for a total of six generators. It has been suggested that three gas turbines may be QD50s rated at 5 MW which will provide a total of 30 MW to the ship. By comparison, the Flight 3 Brook is equipped with three 4 MW gas turbine generators for a total of 12 MW. The greater power generating capacity is likely to supply the variety of new generation sensors on board ship which are likely to consume substantial amount of power. Future variants of 055 are expected to field integrated electric propulsion system, which would enable the ship to field even more powerful sensors and weapons such as railguns and DEWs. Regardless of the Type 055 multi mission capabilities, these ships are being built to be the preeminent escort for the Chinese carrier battle group, acting in a similar role as the Ticonderoga class cruiser today does. This will include being the command and control hub for the battle groups and Thai air warfare operations. In this role, the Type 055 will fulfill something of a missing link within People's Liberation Army Navy's order of battle, with the Type 052 Delta destroyer being the most capable surface combatant before it, but one that is far more limited in capability and weapons capacity than Type 055. With the People's Liberation Army Navy slated to field a fleet of at least four aircraft carriers in the coming decade. The reason for building four of these ships at this time is clear. There will be at least one for each carrier battle group and when the carriers are not sailing, these ships will be able to show the flag by themselves far from home and bringing 
high end multi mission and command and control capabilities to smaller People's Liberation Army Navy Task Force. It is also likely that another four Type 055s will be built at some time following the initial batch as China's aircraft carrier fleet expands. In the end, China's new Type 055 destroyers are under indication of the amazing strides the country has made in their attempt to reach some sort of priority in multi domains of warfare with the US and especially its regional allies. That's not to say these ships and their weapons are as capable as their American counterparts, because in many ways they are not. Even China's shipbuilding capabilities are rumored to be lacking, especially in terms of quality when compared to the American counterparts. The level of integration between their ships, sensors and weapons. The reliability of their missiles, especially when countermeasures are present and their missiles overall performance abilities remains a question mark as well. But that's not really the point. The point is that China is preparing for a future of major naval power projection with this vessel class sailing closely alongside their aircraft carriers, two of which are built. Together, they are the most visible centerpieces of a much more aggressive and further reaching naval strategy. This may not leave the US Navy shaking in its boots, but when it comes to regional powers such as India and Japan, that is a different story. These ships and the carriers they will support will likely end up having persistent presence in the South China Sea, Taiwan Strait, Indian Ocean and East China Sea, all places where tensions are high and territorial issues are top of mind.